Okay, I've never looked into this story before, ever. Chris Watts. Okay, until today. Now, I've just spent a bunch of time looking into this story. You know, the Chris Watts story. The guy who killed his wife and his two little girls. The guy you saw in court. The guy you see in jail. Well, that you see. Okay. But the more I've watched, the more I begin to question this. Question this. I'm not going to say what I'm saying is true, by no means. But, considering I live in a world where lines the norm, propaganda has been legalized by criminals to call themselves your leaders, your owners, and media does nothing but lie. And since I've witnessed and watched things that I know is complete BS, without a doubt, like a certain elementary school that I won't even say the name of, but you all know what I'm talking about, where somebody walked in and shot a bunch of kids that didn't exist because the school was closed. Since I've witnessed a Trayvon Martin case that never took place, a mock courtroom, a Hollywood courtroom, that's right. Since the real criminals are the people who control all of our systems and have access to all of our systems in real life, from prisons to courtrooms to judges to courts to everything are all behind the propaganda being fed to the media on a regular basis. The more of this I watched, the more I began to realize there's a really, 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 really good chance this never took place. That this is another psyop that they have fooled the public with. Now, of course, you're going to say, well, why would they do that? Well, I can't give you the answer for exactly why outside of their people behind our media, military industrial complex, CIA, the people behind what's going on and been going on around this world who are in control are very, 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 very sick, deranged, mentally psychopaths. What kind of agenda would they have out of doing this? I think more division, more male shaming, that's right, more bashing the man down, okay, what else could have they gotten out of it, I don't know, unless there was something they got in here for financial gain, I really can't answer the question, but I can tell you this, if you apply a little logic, a little common sense to the story <coughs> and you look at this okay 20,000 subs video after 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 video of Chris Watts, his court hearings, his interviews from jail, his family, that's right, his deceased wife speaking out over and over and over and over again. 
Is it possible she was up on social media, Facebook, what have you, and doing something online and maybe had a YouTube page and a Facebook page and had already made tons of videos? Yes, that is. That is very possible. Like I said, I'm not saying this didn't happen. But I'm saying the more I look, the more it stinks. The more I listen, the more it stinks. It stinks to high hell of a big psyop, excuse my language. Okay? And that's my opinion at this point. I'm showing you this, and I'll leave you the link in the more. You can come to this channel. Okay, the trend. And you can listen, and you can watch, and you can listen, and you can watch. And then I would have to employ you to use critical thinking skills. Pay attention to what's being said and going on. And then I want to show you something else. I mean, this just don't end. This YouTube channel here is pretty much dedicated to... At least a whole majority of it is to the trend. And when we look through the trend, we seem to be seeing male perpetrators. We seem to be seeing lots and lots of Chris Watts, Chris Watts, okay? obvious clues to Chris Watts and the story and the story just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on to no end and then there's this that's right the dark untold truth of Chris Watts behind bars so unless this person Bill knows Bill, N-O-S-E, Nose, Nosy. Okay. Unless this Bill Nosy, <laughs> I just put the E on it myself or the Y on it. Okay. Unless this Bill Nose character, fictional name, I'm sure, is a prison guard in a prison in real life in America where Chris Watts is presently housed, who's opening his mail, he would not have access to Chris Watts's mail. To be reading letters that he has received in prison from females. When you pay attention to what this guy's story is and what he's saying, and right here, I stopped it right here. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to give anybody any reason to say, Oh, copyright! Okay? But I'm going to tell, encourage you to use critical thinking skills, common sense, and stop just going with the stories that are being fed to you. When we already know that your mainstream media is run and controlled by criminals and that they lie to you because it's legal, they make up fiction stories regularly, they use Hollywood, that's right, they use made up freaking Hollywood courtrooms, like they did with Trayvon Martin, to sell you BS. So unless this guy here on this channel works for the penitentiary, recorded these letters himself, which I think that there would be some kind of Rule or law or something he would be breaching here to do this, okay? 
if he worked there. I can't say for sure. But unless he's in that position, then you have to really question where would he get these letters that were supposedly mailed to Chris Watts in prison from all of these females that like him. Now, do I believe there's females that emailed or not emailed, but sent letters to the prison where Chris Watts is at to him? As sick as our world is, yes, I do. Am I saying this story is fraudulent? No, but I highly suspect it is. Though, however, it may not be, right? But when I look at everything I've watched for the last couple hours, three hours, whatever, lost track of time digging into this, and I see what I see, you know, we got one young guy that come up here and he just had all this footage of what made the cops believe that he was the suspect. And he had the cop right outside the house when she come, the day she come up missing. He just happened to be rolling the cameras on the day she come up missing. Be at the house with the cop when the report came in and blah, blah, blah. And the cop was trying to go investigate to see if the woman, if the so-called female wife was okay, that she was diabetic. And that maybe she's in stress or distress and needs medical attention. Okay. And the cop can't even get into the house because protected by the Fourth Amendment. Well, we know how well our government and justice system protects the Constitution, don't we? But in that video, we talked about, the cop talked about, he can't enter the house. It's all up, but we can't get in without violating the Fourth Amendment. Could he, be a, could he be a constitutional cop? Yes, he could. Also, but you got to really think. How would somebody be there with a camera to film the entire incident? How would they be allowed in with a camera to walk right into Chris's house when he finally did come home? How would he be there with a camera to film all this? How do we need to be there with a camera to go across the street and go into a neighbor's house or down the road into a neighbor's house? <coughs> Actually, it wasn't across the street. It was down the road, the same side of the block. Okay? How would he be there with a camera to know to go up to this house with these people, and why would they even let him in filming? Okay? And then he's showing you all the footage on his TV set from his own security cameras in his own personal house, and he just happens to have a security camera that points down the street on his side of the block to a neighbor's house. Makes sense out of that. Do you follow where I'm going here? Not only the fact that this person here is reading letters mailed to the prison system openly in a video on YouTube. How would he have access, how would this person have access to them letters? To even be reading them, okay? How would there be a cameraman at the door of Chris Watts' home in Colorado, the New World Order State, when a well-being check called in by a concerned neighbor to the police how would this person just happen to be there with the cops there to film the entire event and just stay there filming right up until supposedly this many hours later when Chris finally showed up at home and then be allowed to go in the house and film everything and then go down the street to the neighbor's house and film it and then he's telling you all about Chris's body language. But when you look at the face of the gentleman who done the video who's telling you as he puts his little icon picture, if that is him up there, 
telling you, look at this body language and he's using all the stuff he's saying. And you look at the age and you're thinking, excuse me. From what I'm seeing here, this is not somebody old enough to really know body language that well. Not that people ain't really good at reading body language, but let me tell you something. Learning to read body language on people and being very accurate with your reading body language comes from living life. It doesn't come from a college. It doesn't come from reading a book. It doesn't come from, well, I've been on earth 20 years, 22 years, and 23 years, and I'm that good. No. It comes from many years of living on this earth and being in many different real life situations. This is where your skill for leading bodily language comes from. Yes, I am pretty good at reading body language myself, but then I'm 58 years old. My son is 22 years old and he's terrible at reading body language. And I don't know many 20, 22, 25 year olds or even 28 year olds or 30 year olds that's good at reading body language. They pick up on signs, they pick up on some body language, but the better you get comes with age comes with experiencing life in many different situations from people. So, once again, I'm going to call bullshit on this whole story. I'm not going to say it didn't happen, but there's too much stacked against it for it to be real. So, I had to come up and do this video because of everything I've seen. And I haven't even gone all through it yet, but I'm to a point right now where there's no need to sigh up. It's fraudulent. It didn't happen. It didn't take place. You have actors in front of you. This was all planned. Because you really got to use your head and really think about this. And I'm throwing a couple obvious things in your face. There is a video. I don't got it up here right this moment. That I watched. Okay, from the day of the event. The day that she went missing. When the concerned neighbor called law enforcement. For a well-being check. And this camera person just happens to be right there. Just happens to be allowed to stay there the entire time. Just happens to go right into Chris's house. With Chris and the cop and the neighbor. Just happens to be able to go right on down the street. To the neighbor who caught the footage. Of him supposedly loading. They suspect loading the bodies. Okay. And the neighbor's camera just happened to be a security camera with all these footage from security around his house pointing down the street. Okay, it just happens to be that way, right? And it just happens to be that this guy here is receiving the emails from the prison system to show you on YouTube. They're sent to Chris from women who are obsessed with Chris Watts. So, last but not least, before I get on out of here, I'm going to say it again. I call bullshit on this. My personal feeling, though, like I said, this may be real, right? I could be totally wrong, right? Yes, I could. But with everything I've witnessed and seen and watched so far looking into this, because I've never looked into it before, screams to high heaven and back of complete, utter bullshit. Nothing but a big psyop and actors pulling the blanket over your face again. And this is how sick our world is right now. 
and nobody's willing to stand up to these criminals and put a stop to this type of behavior. Everybody's just bending over. Where's the lube, Ralph? Excuse my language, but that's what's going on. With that being said, I'm going to get on out of here, but I wanted to point this out to you.